Hi everyone, I'm Samuel from Zoom. Thanks for tuning in to this live stream where we're going to be talking about the Zoom V3 vocal processor. Now a vocal processor is a piece of gear that's going to affect or alter your voice to either enhance it and perfect it or to add specialty effects, sounds that we couldn't create naturally with our own voice. Now a vocal processor can be used for vocals for music or it can be used for dialogue. So whether you're a podcaster, musician, a vocalist, a streamer, anybody using their voice to share a creation with the world, the V3 is going to have something to offer you. So we're going to review everything about the V3. The buttons, the inputs and outputs, we're going to listen to some of the effects. We're going to talk about setting it up for live use, for recording, um, connecting it over USB to our computer, and really everything in between. So we invite you ask some questions in the chat on this stream. Um, we're going to answer those at the end, along with some additional questions um, that we received on our Facebook page um, on some posts that we have put up. So with that, let's start taking a look at the V3. So I'm going to power this on. After a little startup sequence, we're going to notice first our center section. This is our main effect section where we have 16 options, and we can select one of those at a time. And then at the bottom, we have an effect adjustment. And for different effects, that's going to do different things. Sometimes it's just a mix knob, mixing in affected signal with dry signal. Um, and sometimes it's adjusting a different parameter for an effect. The four effects on the top row here, surrounded by the blue bar, are all related to our key function. So these are uh, mainly for music. Um, and they're going to allow you to focus in on a particular key and allow those effects to do exactly what you're looking for them to do. And we'll be testing out some of those later as well. On the left side of the V3, first we have our Enhance button. Now the Enhance button uh, is something most people will keep on all the time. It has some de-essing. It will take out some of the S sounds that we all make with our voice. It also has some EQ with the purpose of giving your voice a little more clarity, make it a little easier to hear what you're saying. We also have our effect off button, which will bypass our selected effect. And then on the right side, we have three constant effects that we can use in combination with one our uh, selection in the middle. They are compressor, delay, and reverb. Now, delay and reverb are pretty standard effects used for vocals for music. Um, reverb has some applications outside of that as well. And then our compressor. Compressor is going to be something pretty much everybody's going to use. And if you're not familiar with a compressor, what a compressor does is it brings down your loudest levels um, so that they're closer to your lower volume levels and then raises it all up together. And in effect, what it will do is make everything a little easier to hear while maintaining the dynamic differences in your performance. So again, that's a function most people are going to be using, whether you're doing dialogue or vocals. Now I'm going to turn this so we can take a look at the back. We can see the inputs and outputs. So first, we have our mic input. And this is an XLR input, a standard microphone input. We can plug any microphone into here, including ones that require phantom power. We do have a phantom power button there. Sometimes you'll see phantom power labeled as 48 volt phantom power. It is condenser microphones that require um, that phantom power. Then we have our aux input. This is an eighth inch stereo input. We could plug in a music player, a mixing board, our phone, whatever we want into here. And that will get mixed in with the vocals we're making and go to the outputs. Um, as a way of having an accompanying tool when you're using the V3. Then we have our two quarter inch outputs. These are unbalanced outputs, meaning you'll use a TS cable or a uh, sometimes called a guitar cable to go out of there into either a mixing board, a PA system, an audio interface, whatever you're using at the time. Um, you go out those outputs into there. If you only need a mono source, you just use the left output. Um, you do not have to use the right output. Our headphone output is going uh, to allow us to put headphones on with our own volume control to hear what we're doing. And then we've got a USB port, and this is a micro USB port, and that's going to allow us to connect to our computer um, for use as an audio interface, whether we're streaming or recording. Then we have our AC adapter input, along with our power switch, as well as a control in. Now the control in is used for a couple of things. <coughs> The first would be our FSO1 foot switch. 
And if we plug this in, this is actually going to toggle the effect on off function. So that will allow us to do that with our foot rather than um, needing to use our hands. And then our other option is called the FPO2M um, expression pedal. And now if we plug this in, it'll give us foot control over our effect adjustment. So going from one side all the way to the other with our foot rather than needing to use our hands. Both very useful in a live situation. So that's the buttons, that's the inputs and outputs. Now let's plug something in. Um, so we're actually not gonna use this microphone. Um, we're gonna use a different one, which we'll talk about. So I'm gonna take my XLR cable, plug that in. And then uh, for the case of our stream, we're actually using the headphone output. That's just how our setup worked. So I'm gonna plug an eighth inch into my headphone output and that's going into the mixer that is then going to the stream. Now, before I switch over, actually, we're going to switch over to the other mic first. Now, this microphone is called the SGV6. Um, now, the ZDM1, which is the one I'm using right now, is a great microphone um, for any sort of broadcast application, vocals for music. Um, it's called the ZDM1. It's a dynamic microphone. This other one's called the SGV6. It's a condenser microphone. It's actually a shotgun microphone. And if you're not familiar with shotgun microphones, they're usually the long tube ones, often used uh, for dialogue, for music, um, uh, for film. And they're used um, to isolate, to make sure we're picking up sounds coming from the front and canceling most of the sounds coming in from the sides. Uh, now, this one is a special design in a handheld vocal microphone format, and the reason is, if we isolate the voice better, then the V3 is going to do a better job of processing that voice. Um, so using the SGV6, an accompaniment with the V3, um, is a great way to enhance the use of both. And with that, let's do our switch over from mic 1 to mic 2. In the SGV6, rather than our ZDM1, now, the last thing I'll point out before I get rid of this is how I have this V3 mounted here. So we're using a tabletop over here, but on the back, there's this quarter 20 standard tripod thread. And that's going to allow us to use um, this as an accessory called the HRM7, which is adjustable, will allow us to mount the V3 in a variety of ways. Um, there is actually even a longer version called the HRM11, which is a little bit longer, uh, both of which can be used mounted to a mic stand. This is a tabletop mic stand, um, but if we were using a floor-mounted mic stand, it would work just the same. All right, so we've got our SGV6, we've got our V3, so let's start checking out a couple of the effects here on the V3. I'm going to throw on a pair of headphones so that I can hear what I'm doing. All right, so I'm gonna turn my compression up a little bit. Like I said, pretty standard effect we're gonna be using all the time. And my enhance button um, is also enabled. So we're gonna start by taking a look at some of these specialty effects that are gonna do a lot to our voice. And we're gonna start with the format character. So I'm gonna start in the middle here and my effect adjustment. And the format character is going to change the timbre of my voice from low to high. And we will hear exactly how it sounds as I go lower. And as I go up, we'll get a higher timbre, um, very artificial voice. So that's the Formon character. We've got our deep. Two, two. Hey, this is the deep effect, which will give us that deep voice. All right, we've got our uh, child, which will give us that artificial child voice sound. And, uh, and lots of others. We're gonna switch over to our keyed effects. Um, uh, actually, first we're gonna start with octave. I'm gonna do a couple of examples here where I'm gonna sing for you. I am not a professional singer. I think it'll sound better when you do it, but I do want you to hear how some of these effects sound. So we're gonna start with the octave, and octave is going to be um, our effect adjustment. If I go below the middle point, it's gonna add a lower octave. If I go above, it's gonna be a higher octave, and then it's gonna control the mix of that. 
Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen and down the mountainside. That's our octave. Um, pitch correction. Pitch correction is a very popular function on here. Um, that will um, help us when we're singing, get the notes right to where we want them to be. If we're using the keyed option, it will do it based on the key we select. Um, so it will only allow the voice to go to a note within that key. Or we can use the chromatic option, which will allow it to go to any note in the standard scales that we use. So I'm going to start with the keyed pitch correct. I'm going to start with the effect just fairly low and turn it up. It's going to go from a subtle sound to a very affected sound, um, something that you might hear commonly um, in a kind of the auto-tune, um, hyper-auto-tuned vocal sound. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. Switch to chromatic. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. All right, that's our pitch correction. Uh, now to one of the most popular effects on here for sure is the harmony. Uh, if you're a solo performer, whether it's streaming online, whether you're live, being able to add harmonies to your performance can be a huge enhancement um, to your voice. So up top, we have our five harmony um, selections. You could choose two at a time, lower, low, fixed, high, and higher. Um, fixed is going to just lock into the root note of the key we've selected, and then the others are going to be different intervals. So I'm going to turn up our effect adjustment a little bit to make sure we're able to hear this pretty well. And, um, and let's see how we do. <clears throat> Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go and I must bide. So I'm going to do that for a couple more seconds. And while I do that, I'm, uh, as I'm switching my harmonies, I'm also going to increase my compression and my reverb um, to see if that gets me a little closer to a tone that I would be using live. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go and I must lie. And that is our harmony. Oop, our reverb is still up pretty high. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. <coughs> and uh, with that, let's talk about setting this up um, with our computer using the USB um, output. So, um, so like I said, we're using the headphone output right now for our stream. We could use the analog outputs to go to a mixing board um, or a PA system in a live situation. If we're in a recording situation, we can go from those into a portable recorder or into an audio interface going into our DAW, uh, into our computer. But the V3 can act as an audio interface all by itself um, using the micro USB connection. So I'm actually going to move this one out of the way, that's our stream. I'm gonna move to our other V3 and grab my micro USB cable. Plug that in, power it on. Okay. So I'm on a Mac computer, and if I'm using a Mac, there is no driver required to use the V3. 
Um, it will show up automatically. If you're on a Windows computer, you will need to download the driver from our website, um, install that, and then you'll be able to do very similar operation, which is open up your system preferences, go to your sound selections. Now I'm going to select the V3 as my input device. And then for the output, I do have the option to select the V3, which would allow me to use the headphone output on the V3. Um, but in this case, I'm going to leave that as my internal speakers. Now I'm going to open up a uh, software called OBS. So if you're not familiar with OBS, it is uh, a uh, software that helps with streaming. It allows you to um, combine different audio and video sources um, that can be coll collated, then sent to YouTube Live, Facebook Live, whatever live service you use. So we open this up, open up our settings menu, and in our mic auxiliary audio drop down, we're going to see our V3. We're going to make that selection. Uh, one more step, we're going to go to our sources, add an audio input capture device. Name it V3, choose the V3 as the device. And now if I were to go ahead and plug in a microphone into here, we'd see that fader there. I'd be able to mix it in with my other audio and video sources and do my live stream. Now it's a very similar operation if you're using a teleconferencing software or other streaming service. It's just select the V3 as your audio input device and you're good to go. The other program I'll show you is Adobe Audition. So this is a uh, DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Um, this is the one I use, but if you use Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, um, the operation will be the same. Open up your program, go to your preferences, your audio hardware preferences, select the V3 as my input device. I'm gonna leave the output as the built-in output, but again, I could select the V3 if I wanted to use that headphone output. And now when I add a track to my session, the V3 is going to be my input source, and I'll be able to record using all of the effects available on the V3 itself. And so that is um, a good overview of the V3 vocal effects processor. Now I'm going to jump over. Um, to some questions we received on uh, this stream, um, but I'm also going to answer some questions that we got on our Facebook page because um, the answers might be useful to you as well. Um, so the first one, will it work with uh, phantom power microphones? Yes, the V3 will work with any microphone. Um, condenser, dynamic, um, if you have a condenser microphone that requires phantom power, just make sure you have that phantom power selection enabled and you will be good to go. Can I use the V3 effects on any instrument? Um, the short answer is yes, there's no reason not. Plug in a microphone, put that microphone on an instrument, and you'll be able to use these effects on there. These effects were designed individually for a voice, um, but there's no reason why you couldn't try it out on a different instrument. Does this unit track harmonies with chord changes? Um, no, it does not. Um, so all of your harmonies are always going to be associated with the key that you select to the right, to the left. Um, there's no external input or anything that would allow um, you to get a different chord progression going in there. Can the V3 be used for voiceover and cinematic work? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, is it great for voiceover work? The two effects that definitely jump out are the enhance function as well as the compression knob. Um, compression is very heavily used in voiceover work. Um, however, all the other effects could come in handy as well. Can you use this with video conferencing software? Um, yes, as long as the software has an audio input selection, the V3 will show up as that audio input selection. So Zoom, Microsoft Teams, um, Google Meet, whatever you use, the V3 can be used with it. Is there a foot pedal version of the V3. Um, yes, we actually have another vocal processor called the V6. It's a little bit of a larger footprint um, and it has um, three different effect sections. You can save presets and recall them. Um, you can actually use the pitch correct and the harmonies at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, 
and so that V6 is available. It actually comes with this SG V6 microphone. So if these are the effects you want, but you want a little more features and ability to use them, um, the V6 might be the uh, better option for you. Is there an anti-feedback feature? Uh, on the V3, no, there is not. But on the V6, there is. Battery life on the AA batteries. Um, so it's four AA batteries can go in the back. You can power this unit for about four, uh, three and a half hours. Um, and uh, that is plenty for a musical show, most live streams. Um, but again, you have the AC power option and you could also power through the USB port. Is this a smaller version of the V6? Of Oh, uh, the P8. Uh, no. So um, our P8 is a podcast recorder. Um, that's going to be a little different. Some similar functions, interface function, um, but that's really a recorder. Um, this is a vocal processor, but there is the bigger brother to this, the V6. How much is the Zoom V3? Um, currently in the U.S., the V3 is uh, $199.99. What does Chorus do? Chorus, um, yeah, I guess I'll let you hear it real quick. Chorus... Chorus is going to add a bunch of layers to my voice. Uh, more commonly used um, vocals for music than um, for dialogue, but um, this is how it sounds. Um, if you want to use it for dialogue, it would work too. All right. Looks like that's all of the questions we have had come in. I want to thank everybody very much for tuning in and learning about the V3 vocal processor. If you want to know more about it, you could check out our website. We have some other videos on our YouTube channel about it. Um, and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck and enjoy recording.